The rule of two instituted by Darth Bane allowed the Sith to gain power in secret for 1,000 years, culminating in successfully taking control of the galaxy under the rule of Darth Sidious and his apprentice Darth Vader. A necessary doctrine, so as to avoid the internal strife and infighting that plagued and weakened the Sith for millenniums, the rule of two demanded only two Sith at any single time, a master and an apprentice a master to embody the power, and an apprentice to crave it. However, predictably so, not every master and apprentice stringently adhered to the doctrine of the Rule of Two, and took on a secret Sith apprentice in violation of Darth Bane's directive to destroy the Jedi and the Republic, and to rule the galaxy. In this video expose, I will give my opinion of the five most powerful secret Sith apprentices, where either a master took on a second Sith apprentice to replace the first, without the first apprentice knowing, or where the apprentice took on an apprentice of their own, outside of the knowledge of their master, to train and continue the Bainite system when they took the life of their master. But first, let's pause to thank our unofficial supporter, Star Wars Legends, where there are hundreds of important characters and stories that have absolutely no bearing on the current canon. Star Wars Legends is written by authors that are said to be so wise that they could write stories for over 30 years without destroying the canon that was carefully crafted over that period. However, they couldn't even avoid the destruction of their own canon, as it was killed off by their master as they slept. But anyway... Our fifth most powerful secret Sith apprentice is Darth Cognus. A female Itachi, known simply as the Huntress, she had a natural talent for telepathy and precognition. The Huntress was a Force-sensitive in whom the dark side flowed strongly. She'd made use of these natural talents as an assassin, roughly 1,000 years before the events of A New Hope. The Huntress took her first steps toward becoming a secret Sith apprentice when she was contracted to provide the Princess of Doan, Princess Sierra, with the location and capture of Darth Bane. In a confrontation with Darth Bane, the Huntress was quite amazingly successful in capturing him when she was able to cut into the Dark Lord of the Sith with her blade, coated in Senflax, which was a neurotoxin that rendered Darth Bane unconscious, resulting in his imprisonment in the stone prison on Doan. After Darth Bane was able to escape his imprisonment and torture, the Huntress and Darth Bane confronted each other again in the hangar of the prison. This time, Having felt that she had been living a life without purpose, and by feeling that the Force was telling her that her destiny was about to be brought into clear view, the Huntress pledged herself to serve Darth Bane unquestionably, if the Sith Lord took her as his apprentice and taught her the ways of the Sith. Darth Bane accepted the Huntress's pledge, and after pursuing Princess Sierra to Ambria and ending her life, the Huntress was given the title of Darth Cognus and taken as Darth Bane's secret Sith apprentice, as it was outside the knowledge of Darth Bane's original apprentice, Darth Sana. The Rule of Two was reinstated, in a pretty unusual way. After Darth Sana defeated Darth Bane and she took Darth Cognus as her own Sith apprentice to continue the grand plan towards destroying the Jedi in the Republic and ruling the galaxy. What we do know about Darth Cognus is that she possessed exceptionally strong telepathic and precognitive abilities, these abilities allowed Darth Cognus to use the Force to see into an individual's past, as well as to gain a view of the future to a great extent. Further, she was powerful enough in her Force abilities to suppress and disrupt the use of the Force for other Force users. Darth Cognus was even able to momentarily suppress Darth Bane's use of the Force to grant her the opportunity to use her Senflax coated blade to render him unconscious. Coming in at number 4, we have Darth Venomous. Darth Venomous was a male Bith who was taken as Darth Tenebris' secret Sith apprentice, and thereby violating the Rule of Two as instituted by Darth Bane. Tenebris trained Venomous in secret, and outside the knowledge of his original apprentice, Darth Plagueis. After Venomous became aware of the fact that Plagueis killed his master Tenebris on Baldemic and assumed the title of Dark Lord of the Sith, he determined to confront Plagueis and eliminate him in order to fulfill Tenebris' final directive before continuing the grand plan of destroying the Jedi and the Republic. Darth Venomous traveled to and confronted Darth Plagueis on the moon of Sojourn. 
where the two one-time apprentices of Darth Tenebris engaged in lightsaber combat. Although Venomous fought hard and demonstrated powerful skills, the secret apprentice was ultimately bested by Plagueis. However, Venomous was not granted an easy death. Rather, he was forced to consume a coma bloom flower that placed Venomous into a coma, and allowed Plagueis to conduct experiments upon him in regards to his midichlorians. Venomous was not granted death until his usefulness had ended decades later. Darth Venomous was a supremely skilled lightsaber duelist. His skills with a lightsaber were superior to those of Darth Plagueis, forcing Plagueis to utilize his greater command of the dark side of the force in order to best Venomous, as he could not defeat him outright in lightsaber combat. Venomous, however, also demonstrated powerful force abilities. He proved that he had an exceptional command of the dark side through his ability to generate force lightning. Further, Venomous had the ability to levitate and suspend himself in midair, which is a difficult ability for even the most powerful of dark side users. If that wasn't enough, Darth Venomous was even able to levitate himself in midair as he engaged Darth Plagueis in lightsaber combat. In the third position of the most powerful secret Sith apprentices is Savage Opress. Savage Opress was a male Dathomirian knight brother, born to Mother Talzin of the Night Sisters, roughly 54 years before the events of A New Hope. Savage was recruited by Asajj Ventress as part of her plan to seek revenge upon her former Sith master, Count Dooku. Following his selection by Ventress after completing her selection trials, Mother Talzin used her magic to place Savage under the control of Ventress and to provide him with impressive physical and fighting abilities, which Ventress hoped could be used to take out Dooku and enact her revenge. Savage Opress operated as an enforcer in Count Dooku's Confederacy of Independent Systems during the Clone Wars and executed a number of missions against the Republic forces. Not long thereafter, Dooku took Savage as his secret Sith apprentice and brutally trained him in secret outside of the knowledge of his master Darth Sidious. Dooku desired to utilize Savage to overthrow Darth Sidious and gain control of the galaxy himself. When Asajj Ventress went to put her plan of revenge into action against Count Dooku, Savage Opress broke the spell Ventress had over him, while simultaneously ending his Sith apprenticeship under Dooku. Fleeing to Dathomir, Savage came to learn from Mother Talzin that he was the brother of Darth Maul, whom he then rescued from his isolation on Lotho Minor, and restored him both physically and mentally. Savage Opress then became a Sith apprentice for the second time under his brother. Even though Darth Maul had been replaced from the official Sith lineage by Count Dooku, Savage and Maul then began wrecking havoc throughout the Outer Rim. But by seizing control of the planet Mandalore, they reached too far, as this brought them to the attention of Darth Sidious, who considered the brothers too dangerous to his plans to be left unchecked in the galaxy. Darth Sidious then traveled to Mandalore to confront them, culminating in the death of Savage. Savage Opress was an extremely powerful secret Sith apprentice, fueled by his impulsive nature and rage. Savage was exceptionally powerful in lightsaber combat. He easily, almost comically defeated Jedi Master Halsey and his Padawan Nox in a lightsaber duel. As if that wasn't impressive enough, Savage defeated Jedi Master Adi Gallia in lightsaber combat, who sat on the Jedi High Council during the Clone Wars and who achieved a reputation for being an aggressive warrior and a skilled lightsaber duelist in her own right. Savage showed his impressive skills with a lightsaber, as he could not be contained in a three-way lightsaber battle between Count Dooku and Asajj Ventress, and was even able to escape by successfully fighting his way through Anakin Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi. It took the power and skill of Darth Sidious to finally bring an end to Savage Opress. Our second most powerful secret Sith apprentice is Asajj Ventress. Just to state up front, this one might be a bit controversial in terms of whether she can correctly be categorized as a secret Sith apprentice or not, but we'll get into that in just a minute. Asajj Ventress was a Dathomirian female born into the Force-sensitive Night Sister clan led by Mother Talzin. She wore a number of different hats during her life, including Bounty Hunter, Jedi Padawan, and Sith Apprentice, the latter of which was during the time of the Clone Wars. 
Ventress came into contact with Jedi Knight Kai Narek early in her life. He taught her to use the Force as per the teachings of the Jedi Order, while being stranded on the planet of Ratatak for a decade and protecting the local population from pirates and warlords. After Narek was killed by pirates, Asajj Ventress became enraged by this loss and turned to embrace the dark side of the Force. This led to her being discovered by Count Dooku, who at the time was looking for an apprentice with whom he could overthrow Dark Sidious and then become master himself and take the title of Dark Lord of the Sith. Dooku, with this ambition in mind, took Ventress as his apprentice, providing tutelage as a student and assassin. Now, let us address here the issue that Asajj Ventress was not a secret in the true sense of the word, as Ventress and her training under Count Dooku was not completely unknown to Darth Sidious, as she did become a commander in the Separatist droid military and an assassin who was in the employ of the Sith. We also know that Darth Sidious knew about Ventress, as at one point we see that Ventress reports her progress of the mission to abduct Jabba the Hutt's son to both Count Dooku and Darth Sidious. So, if Darth Sidious knew about Asajj Ventress, then why is she on a list of secret Sith apprentices? Ventress is on the list because she was originally taken as Count Dooku's apprentice in order to overthrow his master Darth Sidious, and this motivation was hidden from Sidious. This is borne out as we see that Sidious catches on to Dooku's plan and confronts Dooku about his training of Ventress, as he becomes convinced that she's being trained by Dooku as a way of overthrowing him, allowing Dooku to assume the title of master. Sidious then demands that Dooku kill Ventress, as a show of loyalty to him, to which Dooku reluctantly agrees. Therefore, because Count Dooku took Asajj Ventress as his Sith apprentice to overthrow Darth Sidious, and kept this motivation hidden under the guise that she was being trained to utilize her as a dark side assassin, Asajj Ventress earns a spot on the list of the most powerful secret Sith apprentices. After Count Dooku gives the orders to fire upon Ventress's command ship, in order to placate the concerns of Darth Sidious, and was left for dead, Ventress embarked upon a plan to enact revenge against Dooku, which ultimately failed. Ventress then went down a path of straddling the line of the light and the dark, culminating with her death at the hand of Dooku, when she sacrificed herself by taking Dooku's force lightning to save the life of her lover, Quinlan Voss, thereby fully redeeming herself in the light. Asajj Ventress proved herself to be a powerful and formidable lightsaber duelist. She trained under the teachings of the Jedi from a young age, and also under the tutelage of Count Dooku. Ventress engaged in lightsaber combat with the most powerful Sith and Jedi during the time of the Clone Wars, and survived, even when the numbers were stacked against her. A master of the Jarkai style of lightsaber combat, Asajj Ventress was a skilled enough opponent to be recognized as too powerful for any single Jedi to fight alone. Ventress also had significant abilities with the Force, as even Darth Sidious recognized that she was powerful in her abilities and became fearful that she could combine with Count Dooku to overthrow him. She was supremely skilled with telekinesis, able to levitate powerful Jedi Masters into the air. Further, Ventress was so powerful in her force capabilities that she was able to force choke both Anakin Skywalker and Obi-Wan Kenobi at the same time, while simultaneously telekinetically levitating both of them in the air. Coming in at the number one spot on our list of most powerful secret Sith apprentices is Galen Merrick, aka Starkiller. Galen Merrick was a male human who was born to two Jedi Knights who deserted the Jedi Order during the Clone Wars. Merrick came to the attention of Darth Vader when he tracked down and killed his father. Vader was able to sense that Merrick, even though he was just a young child at the time, possessed a significantly strong connection to the Force, a connection that Vader would exploit. Darth Vader trained the orphan, codenamed Starkiller, in the ways of the dark side and took him on as his secret Sith apprentice, outside of the knowledge of his master, Darth Sidious. Starkiller became totally immersed within the dark side through the exceptionally difficult physical and psychological training that he was put through by Darth Vader, which made him a valuable assassin for Vader to use against his enemies. However, having been deceived by Darth Vader on multiple occasions, and outraged that Vader was not willing to challenge Darth Sidious even with his assistance, 
Starkiller once again embraced his heritage as a Jedi and abandoned his identity as Starkiller, again becoming Galen Merrick. Ultimately, Merrick went on to sacrifice his life in order to save the Senators who were tremendously important to the Rebellion, including Bail Organa and Mon Mothma, which allowed for the creation of the Rebellion and facilitated the outbreak of the Galactic Civil War against the Empire. Galen Merrick was significantly powerful in his Force abilities, having the potential to be one of the most powerful Force users in the history of both the Jedi and the Sith. He was able to master the use of force lightning that was strong enough to kill an opponent with a single blast. This means that the strength of his force lightning was equal to that of Darth Bane, a Dark Lord of the Sith. Merrick additionally had tremendous telekinesis powers, able to utilize tremendously powerful force pushes and repulses. His telekinesis powers were powerful enough to stop TIE fighters in midair, and even manipulate the direction of an Imperial Star Destroyer using the force. Merrick also contained the use of force speed in his repertoire of force abilities, which allowed him to maintain a sprinting speed for a brief time across a short distance. He was also able to use the force to perform mind tricks in order to force individuals to do his bidding, or to even cause confusion within his opponents during battle. Galen Merrick was also adeptly skilled at lightsaber combat, where his skills were refined through brutal sparring and teaching sessions with Darth Vader. Merrick had a basic understanding of all seven forms of lightsaber combat, thereby granting him the ability to recognize the techniques used by his opponents and to strategize accordingly. He personally specialized in three forms of combat that allowed him to utilize aggressive offensive strategies and practically impenetrable defensive strategies when necessary. Merrick's proficiency in lightsaber combat was on full display in his victories over three Jedi Masters, including Ram Koda, Kazdan Paratus and Shakti, killing the latter two. The victory over Shakti was particularly impressive considering that she sat upon the Jedi High Council and was considered one of the greatest lightsaber duelists of her era. As if that wasn't enough, Merrick even managed to overwhelm and defeat his former master, Darth Vader. Most impressive. There we have it, my list of the five most powerful secret Sith apprentices in my opinion. We love making these videos, so why not subscribe for more fun Star Wars theories and discussions. Also, if you enjoyed the video, think about giving a like, or leaving a comment. If not for me, for deceased Padawan Knox.